guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, hello, my name is Brenda. I'm an esthetician here on YouTube. And if you're not new, hi, thank you for watching my content. So today's video is another skincare related video. It is all about chemical peels. We're gonna talk about the process of chemical peels, some tips that you should you know, keep in mind if you are thinking about getting a chemical peel. And we're gonna also talk about the misconceptions about chemical peels. So if that interests you, just keep on watching. So first of all, chemical peels. What are chemical peels? Chemical peels are uh, peels that are made of different chemical exfoliants. With chemical peels, it's just a chemical solution that is comprised of different types of chemical exfoliants like AHAs or BHAs. They also have TCA. So there are various different chemical peels out there. There are professional grade peels. There are over-the-counter peels, obviously. If you are someone that is a skin enthusiast, you've seen products that actually have peel on them. And with chemical peels, a lot of people are interested in peels, but they do not know, you know, they're kind of fearful because they don't know. They like peel and they automatically think, oh my God, I'm freaking out. Because for me, being an esthetician, I actually perform a very low level peel compared to what you can get at a dermatologist, for example. It could be a higher level peel. There are peels like the Janissa peel and different peels that are really highly concentrated. But I'm just gonna be speaking from my experiences with peels and just walking through the process of an actual peel. So with a chemical peel, initially what you should know out of the gate is that not everybody peels, I repeat, not everybody peels. So many people are concerned about peeling, which peeling is not a bad indicator. Excessive peeling um, happens, especially if you're getting a higher grade, like I said, a higher grade peel, maybe in a dermatologist's office, but if you're getting a peel and you're peeling, that's a good indicator that that skin is resurfaced and that is old dead skin and it's flaking off and new skin is replacing that old skin. Like 90% of people that are going in for chemical peels actually do not even peel. So, so many people fear that and there's not anything to fear. Another thing that I wanna mention is like a couple tips for actually looking into getting a peel. So initially when you're thinking about getting a peel, you have to consider the state of your skin. If you go into an esthetician's um, you know, studio or you go into a dermatology office, that person is gonna give you a consultation. They're gonna actually make sure that your skin is ready for a peel. Yes, your skin needs to be ready for a peel. If you have a compromised skin barrier, for example, when your moisture barrier is compromised, maybe your skin is completely like oily, completely dry and flaky, you're experiencing burning or itching um, at an intense level, then obviously you wouldn't be the right person to get a peel and they'll be able to assess that through the consultation. So that's definitely something that you wanna keep in mind. Um, I generally would say go and get a regular facial or go in for a consultation before you get a peel because you wanna make sure that your skin is in the best state and it's actually ready. When getting a chemical peel, you should stop using all resurfacing products. So that's anything from acids to retinoids. You don't want to use these before getting a peel. If you're gonna get a peel, you just stop using that maybe like three to five days before getting the peel because the peel is actually resurfacing your skin so you don't want to use resurfacing products before you're going to get an intense peel um, of any sort. So I would say stop using any of your resurfacing products. Um, also, another tip for you know chemical peels is do not do them at home. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Wait a minute, hold up! You shouldn't be doing a peel at home, not an intense peel. If you're doing a peel, say for instance, like I mentioned this in my favorite video, and I took it down because I don't want people to get into having to get the most highly concentrated thing. Say for instance, you have the ordinary peel solution. I personally really like the ordinary peel solution. Do I think it's right for everybody's skin? No, and I also, that's one of the main reasons if you've seen my videos about exfoliation or if you've seen my videos about you know my skincare favorites, I like peels, but they are not for every skin type. And you also have to take in consideration, like I said, with a professional peel, you wanna know that your skin is in a healthy state to get a peel. Because if your skin is not in a healthy state to get a peel, you can actually do more damage to the actual skin barrier. 
I'm gonna talk about some of the benefits of getting chemical peels. So some of the main benefits of getting chemical peels are improving the texture of the skin. Since you are increasing the skin's natural turnover, your skin is going to be a lot smoother. So if you have a lot of texture, your skin is going to automatically be a lot smoother when you're getting a chemical peel. Chemical peels are also great because they help with hyperpigmentation because they're resurfacing the skin so they can actually break up those pigment cells which are our you know melanocytes they can actually help break up that pigment and the skin can be a lot more even and have more of an even tone also another benefit to getting a professional chemical peel is if you have acne it actually helps with acne as well because it's resurfacing the skin i personally like getting peels um once a month but once a month if you get a peel that can really have a huge impact on some of your main skincare concerns. Everybody starts off on a lower concentrated peel because you wanna see how the skin is going to respond to actually getting the peel. And like I mentioned in my video all about sensitive versus sensitized, everybody has a level of sensitivity, but you need to make sure to be able to gauge that level of sensitivity. Whether that be an esthetician or a dermatologist, when you're getting a peel, they're gonna gauge your level of sensitivity so that they know how many passes they can go over your skin because that is important. You don't want to irritate the skin or break the skin. So after you get a peel, you wanna just replenish the skin. And so with replenishing the skin, what I do is I go on with a very um, antioxidant, very skin strengthening serum. Then I go on with the moisturizer and then of course, in the daytime, if I'm performing a peel, I'm putting on sunscreen to protect the skin because you just resurface the skin and that's fresh, new skin that's exposed. So with the peel process, it's very different for different people. It's also very different depending on what type of peel you get and what setting, whether it be in a dermatologist's office or an esthetician, um, studio or spa. So this is just generally the process of a chemical peel. Hopefully this video helped you understand peels a lot better. Hopefully I kind of gave you, you know, a gist of the whole peel process. Um, like I mentioned, I can't speak for all peels because I haven't performed all peels, um, nor have I got all different types of peels. But this is just a general video to just explain what peels are, the benefit of peels, and kind of the process of a peel um, coming from my standpoint. So yes, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up and also make sure that you subscribe to my channel. If this was helpful, definitely share it, share it. Why not? If it helps you, share it with someone else. And until next time, you guys, thank you so much and bye-bye.